All right, sorry everyone, Jill asked me to record and I forgot. It's like a bell. Um, so yeah, just, just feeling into the sensations. Noticing if you've settled. Noticing if the breath has slowed down or stayed the same. I'm just enjoying this moment of rest together. A little bit of rest and recovery after the new year. And feeling down into the earth underneath us, underneath our house or apartment. And gratitude for all the things that come from the earth. The beets and carrots and potatoes Turnips and all the animals that live underneath the earth. The groundhogs and the worms. And straightening and stretching the spine up to the sky, the crown of the head touching the sky. Letting that spine be tall and dignified. And gratitude for what's above us. Tonight, maybe there's stars where you are, the moon. Gratitude for the sun and clouds. And maybe some gratitude for rain and snow, rainbows, birds, all the things that are in the sky and air above us. And feeling into the sides of the body, the edges, the arms, and letting the body be wide and expansive. And thinking who is next to you in life. Maybe it's your friends, your partner, your pets, your cousin, um, whoever's near you. 
walking this path with you. Feeling the presence of your beloveds, your community at your sides. And how does the body respond to your close ones being at your sides? And bringing your attention to the back body, often neglected on Zoom calls. We don't pay much attention to the back body in life sometimes. Just feeling into the skin, the bones, the muscles. Leaning a bit back if you're leaning forward, really feeling into the back body. And behind us, we can imagine our ancestors, the ones we like. Behind us, maybe grandparents, great-grandparents. Or farther back, aunts and uncles. Just thinking of the ones that you relate to behind you. Maybe you can imagine many generations. Notice how the body responds to your ancestors. And coming to the front body, bringing your attention slowly to the whole of the front body. Breathing into the front body. Relaxing the front body.
the front body is forward facing into your future. What are you leaning into in your future? And if there's any contraction, any efforting, just taking some deep breaths. Sitting back a bit. And feeling what's underneath you again, your cushion. Coming back to rest in sound or breath. Slowly moving the breath to the stomach area, the center of the body. And you can put your hands there or hand if it feels supportive. Breathing into the center point. And taking your time, thinking to yourself about your purpose in this world, 
just a few words, short sentence in your mind. And staying with that purpose, that thought. Breathing into the stomach, belly. And as you stay with that purpose, notice how your body responds to it. And if you're getting sleepy, you can straighten the spine, take some deep breaths in to the center. Relaxing the hands, relaxing the body a little bit more. And slowly coming back to your anchor, breath or sound.
And if your mind has wandered, gently bring you back to the sounds in your space. And resting in the breath if it's supportive. We'll just enjoy the last few minutes in silence. So welcome back everyone. You can keep your cameras on or off. Up to you. Thank you for your practice. Welcome to the late people. Um, we, in the meditation, we, today, we, we, we looked at our purpose. I'm, I'm not sure if it's something you've done before. Um, 
but it's an interesting exercise. It comes from generative somatics. But the Buddha talked often about intention, and I'm wondering uh, if people may make intentions for New Year's. Is that something you do? Maybe, maybe not. Well, if I was, I I want to encourage you today to to think about an intention. Maybe it's just one word or a few words. And if you like, you can put them in the chat, and uh, or you can just say them internally. It's it's up to you. Um, we did this in Montreal at New Year's, and people just said three three words, and it was really wonderful. Um, so just just being with those words and those thoughts, just just for a minute, thinking about what's important to you in two thousand and twenty four. So, um, I'll just, somebody's unmuted, I'll just mute you, but feel free to put it in the chat or just keep it in your heart for the, for the, for the Dharma talk. Oh, some are coming in, um, being in the present, being authentic to stay open. Yeah, these are all amazing, all amazing. And these are things we can do for 2024 or onward, you know, they're just such continual intentions. Um, so I did a whole bunch of research on intention. It was very, very interesting for me, attention and intention. Um, and attention, as you know, brings more skill to your life. It brings more skill to both your thinking mind and your doing body. So it's it's just a great way, like bringing attention to being authentic or staying open or waiting. <laughs> Waiting's a tricky one. Um, you know, just shining the light of attention on it can bring skill to whatever your intention is. And so it's not just about the action, it's also about the thought. So like both both are equally as important um some some of the intentions the buddha talked about was renunciation giving things up which is very popular um at new year's also not harming yourself and not harming others i feel like these are two great intentions and not just other people i suppose you could take that into other animals or plants or trees can go farther. Um, and also another one that he talked about was not being overly attached to something, or you could add also someone, some place, you know, just letting go of that attachment is, is, is a tricky thing to do. And it's something he said was skillful. And then also he talked about like the unskillful things we can look at, which is greed, hatred, and delusion. And maybe you have some of these in your life. Um, but these run very deep in the core of us, you know, like hating or disliking that, that craving towards something and that, that fantasy, that fantasy life or fantasy mind. So these are a lifelong practice of like a continual intention to, to look at those things. And if, if we do shine the light on these things and we do bring our attention on them, it actually lessens our suffering. It's sometimes hard to put the two together, but of course we all want less suffering. That's why we're here, right? So it also, all these things, like all these like wholesome good intentions, like staying open or staying present, you know, it, it affects our future, our future week, month, year, life. Perhaps if you believe in the next lives, like it, 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 it affects our karma. 
So just these tiny intentions, they could be big or, or medium or large, will all affect how we move forward. And it also affects the people around us. I was trying to think of something that I didn't want to do that I that I started to do. You know, I was trying to think about a thing I did. And I remember when I was very like a young adult, I hated flossing my teeth. And every time I went to the dentist, the dental hygienist would be like, you need to floss your teeth, you know, but like in a gentle way. And then eventually I started flossing my teeth sometimes. And now, you know, for years now, I've been flossing my teeth every day. And it's such a small thing, but I have teeth in my mouth, which is great. And like, I increase my self love by doing this, like, and I decrease self harm. And it's such a small act, you know, and it's something that I couldn't do right away. I did a little bit more all the time. So I'm wondering, like, if you can think of something in your life that you didn't want to do, that you started doing slowly, you know, not just like New Year's, a new me, but like a slow thing. So feel free to put it in the chat if you want, because I guess we're still recording, but Right, right, right about something. Maybe it was running or I don't know. Can I say it? Sure, go ahead if you're okay being yeah. on. I don't feel like writing. That's <laughs> um, go ahead. Yeah, um, when COVID started, I, uh, I took a course with a Dharma teacher and I decided that I was going to wash my coffee um, pot every day, every night before I went to bed. I hate cleaning up the kitchen sink. But I did it as a way to show my, to love myself and to, uh, yeah, so, and I still do it. So I can relate to the flossing. <laughs> it's true. It's really hard to wash the coffee pot. Like sometimes I do it the night before and even set it up and I'm very impressed with myself, but it's not daily like that. But I feel like everyone has these things that they aspire to, maybe putting out the clothes the night before, like if you're talking about small things like this. Like when I'm on retreat, I love to put out my my clothes the night before. It's like a retreat habit, but I don't do this in daily life. But these are just small actions. It can be also like other things. But um, I think during COVID or during retreat, it was like easy. It's easier because we were more intentional and more mindful. And now that life is sped up, it just it's a lot faster and it, we have to put more in, in, attention to these things. But I think like this commitment to whatever it is that we want to change, it's like we can build this capacity even if it just starts slowly. Um, you know, if you reflect on your day to day, like if, if everything is a practice, like what did you practice today? Like, what did you give attention to today? I'm just, just taking a moment to think about your day. And thinking back to your intention or your purpose, like in the meditation before, you know, your values. Would it be possible to anchor in your attention to slowly transform the practice of your days, the practice of living? And like the holidays are such a, can be, can be a fast season and time goes by quickly, you know, and, and, and not just the holidays, like winter, spring, you know, things, things go by as, as I get older, it seems to go a little faster. I don't know if you can relate to that. And it's like, well, what do I want to fill my days with? Like, what are my values? What are the people and activities I want to, to be around? Um, like, again, with COVID and retreat, you know, you had, you have a big pause, and maybe you redid things in your life, like after a retreat or during or after COVID. Like lately I had the gift of being on retreat for six weeks. I was with Jill last time, which was, you know, such a blessing, but this time Jill wasn't there. And, um, and you know, when you have six weeks in silence, you really get to think about like, what, 
what am I doing with my life? Like, what do I want to do? And, and I decided while I was there, I'm going to go on a hike every Friday. I'm going to book a communato. I'm here in Quebec, you know, and I'm going to get this car share and I'm going to go on a hike. And so I've done it because I had that pause, you know, that pause to relook at my life, you know, because I know I, I, my nervous system is rested in nature. But it's interesting at New Year's, we always come up with these t t tiny things, well, maybe not always, but some of us make these tiny things of like, what do we want to change? Like, how can we pivot? How can we renew what's important to us? Um, and a lot of people just go to the gym for January, February, March, and then maybe April. And apparently like, that's not just the gym, it's like all resolutions last like three to four months. So it is a, it is a nice time of like trying something for three to five, three to four months, like to put our attention on something new. Um, but in Buddhism, it's not like so much about the goal as you probably know, it's the journey, you know, it's the daily practice. It's not like getting there. It's like the satisfaction is in the, the journey. It's like the juicy part is like just getting there. Um, yeah, and the, the, like back to the idea of the gym, it's like the muscles in our brain when we remember our intention get stronger, you know? Like, I guess it's not the muscles, but, it, you know, it's the, the neural pathways. Maybe it has something to do with brain muscles. I'm not sure. But the, the neural pathways get stronger the more, the more we re-remember our intention. So it's about remembering and re-remembering over and over again. Just like in practice when we, um, we remember to come back to the breath. And then we forget. And then we come back again, you know. So it's just like that re-remembering of intention, that re-remembering of the breath. And we can always renew our intention, like whatever it was, like if we had unskillful speech or action, you know, we can always try again. We can, we can renew our commitment to it. And, um, it's not just the external, like it's renewing internally and renewing externally. And we can use the, ex the external stuff around us to help us come back to our commitment, to our intention and the internal landscape. Because when, when we go against our integrity, we can feel it in our bodies. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a kind of a discomfort, uh, an unpleasant feeling. And maybe it's really, hidden down but but it's often there if we go against our own integrity and most of society is just coasting through life you know in this unconscious manner but like luckily we're here in this room and in our other sanghas and we've found buddhism and we have this like magical ability to come back into our bodies and to come back into our consciousness and it's simple but it's also a magical power that has been taught to us from 2600 years of practitioners who just like kept teaching the next generation the next generation this this way of being present this way that we can actually be liberated through through making mistakes sometimes and then coming back and trying again. And I feel like sometimes in Buddhism, like um, I have a friend who's like, oh, you, you needed to do more research. And it's like, we're constantly doing research about life, you know, like about this intention or this purpose that you made today. Like you can go out this week and, and investigate you know, if you break this, you know, say you're not present, you're not open or authentic, you know, to bring consciousness to it, to awareness and mindfulness. And there's that small moment before you act 
it's like very subtle where there's a choice you know there's a choice to act you know inauthentically or closedly closedly or not you know there's there's a choice and there's so much potential in that choice but sometimes we don't even know we have a choice we're so stuck and it's so sticky that we're not even conscious we have a choice so i i encourage you to find that that subtle urge of action just before you might break the intention like how is that in the body like where what's happening it, in the body maybe you're hungry when you're hungry it's really easy to not be present you know or maybe you're angry at the world news or someone in in your close circle or maybe you're lonely you're maybe just exhausted you know and all these kind of things play into not being conscious of our actions and thoughts so yeah it's that i yeah that little tiny space you have that pause before that's that's where it's like exciting because you have that choice and you know maya angelou said um, do the best you can until you know better then when you know better do better and i had a great talk with jill today about mistakes and you know we're just imperfect humans we're just unskillful sometimes and it's normal it's natural and it's human so we don't need to be shot with the second arrow because it hurts you know we don't need to beat ourselves up for that we can just try again you know we can like shift to like a more wholesome state those repercussions of our actions you know create a desire for change and i think we do want that satisfaction of living in integrity living in purpose and intention um there's also that the build up like what are the causes and conditions that create that like what was your day like? What was the, what created that, that ground for, for impulsivity, for reactivity? Like there's, there's a lot of, sometimes a lot of little steps beforehand. Anyways, I encourage you to do research and investigate all the pre, pre breaking the intention. What, what was there? And sometimes, you know, it's the best action is no action. Maybe the best action is like a nice snack, a walk, a nap, calling a friend, you know. Well, we've come to the end and I still have lots more on this. I, I was very excited about this topic but I want to hear from you <laughs> what you have to say. So I'll stop the recording and uh, get some input from you. <laughs>